uh, Housing Finance and Policy Division will come to order. I'd like to announce that this meeting will take place via House Rule 10.01. And before we get started, the clerk will take the roll to note who is present. All right, uh, Houseman. Here, present. Howard. Tice. Here. Bierman. Present. Fisher. He is here, he's muted. He's here, he's here, but muted. Gunther. Says Gunther is here as well, I can check back. Hassan. Yeah, here. Okay. And then Hassan. Her. Here. Hornstein. He checked in. Here. Johnson. Present. Jurgens. Here. Munson. Munson's present. Pearson. Here. Poppy. Present. And then Sub. Yep. And then Howard, I see you logged in as well. So we are good. Uh, quorum is present. Yes. Uh, next for consideration is approval of the minutes from Wednesday, April 22. Uh, Representative Howard, have you had a chance to uh, review, review the minutes? You're, you are muted, Representative Howard. I have, Madam Chair, and I uh, move the minutes. Representative Howard uh, moves approval of the minutes. Uh, are there any other corrections to that? We can voice vote approval of the minutes. So members, if you please unmute yourselves. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed aye. nay. Motion prevails and the minutes are adopted. And now we'll move on to the agenda. We have two bills on the agenda today. Um, and committee members, you can use the raise hand function on Zoom, or if you're calling in, you can raise your hand by pressing star nine on your phone to be put on the list. And uh, Mr. Worth, I'm assuming either you or Mr. Wilcox will, well, I, I don't see that function on mine right now, but um, you'll alert me if somebody has a question. Um, we, the first um, bill up is um, House File 9. I will move uh, House File 9 um, to get that before, before us. Um, members, you may recall last year, um, we, we had a group come before us, they were housing advocates, uh, who wanted to get um, the money out the door as quickly as possible, and so they wanted to establish a time frame by which um, this uh, money would be moved. And then this year, of course, COVID happened, the pandemic happened. And uh, for, for several of these projects, they can't get the money out the door fast enough. So uh, House File 9, uh, has an extension provided. It's a, it's a one-time extension that just gets us through this, gives uh, these projects a little more time. And that, um, that is the point of House File 9. We have um, Ann Navity from the Minnesota Housing Partnership here if there are questions uh, about this extension. That bill is before us. Questions? Uh, Mr. Worth or Mr. Wilcox, if you are tr tracking, let me know if there are if there are any hands raised. Yes, Madam Chair, I don't see anybody with their hand uh, raised at this okay. time. Um, I, I would just uh, ask Ms. Mavity if you have anything you want to add to to this. Um, no, I. I would only say thank you, uh, sorry about that. I would only say thank you so much for the consideration of this bill and that uh, while several of the projects are moving toward closing and trying desperately to close by that early July deadline, uh, there are at least three, at least 500 units that are unlikely to close in time that we would otherwise lose. So I appreciate the committee's action today. So we've got some urgency around this one. So no uh, uh, questions, um, and, and this one, I think, um, uh, Mr. Wilcox, I believe you will have to take the role. Uh, we, we do have one. We do have one question, Madam Chair, oh, from Representative okay. Munson. 
Representative Munson. Yeah, um, thank you, Madam Chair. And I guess if nobody's going to ask the question. I just would mm -hmm. like to, to understand uh, some of the reasons why there were delays. I mean, uh, it may seem obvious a lot of things have slowed down during this COVID uh, crisis, but um, if, if she could just speak to some of the delays that she's experiencing and why the money wasn't able to go out the door, if it was lenders or contractors or uh, what, but I'd be interested to hear uh, the reasoning. Thanks. Okay, Ms. Ma Ms. Mavity. Yes, thank you so much for the question, uh, Representative and Chair. So I would say that the um, a number of reasons have occurred, and that is correct, Representative, that many of these are COVID-related. Um, for many of them, uh, for example, inspections are needed on the properties that have been delayed because of um, um, the inability of some of the inspectors to get in, the additional protocols for, for example, on some of the preservation projects, um, wanting to make sure that uh, projects where there are families and households in place um, are there that they are safe during the during the construction and relocating and all of that has slowed down. And a number of uh, required IRS hearings um, have been delayed as well um, and not been held because of COVID. So again, some of those now that we are all learning how to work in this environment, some of those are uh, attempting to move forward. Um, and if everything went well, uh, each of the uh, developers are trying desperately to meet this deadline, but it would be a shame with all this work to literally just miss this technical deadline uh, through no fault of their own, really, because of this environment. Um, and that's why we are asking for a one-time exception to add additional time to ensure that these can be closed. Representative Munson, follow-up? No, Madam Chair, thank you very much for the explanation, Ms. Mavity. Thank you. A any further questions? If not, I will renew my motion that House File 9 be referred to the General Register. Um, the clerk will take the roll. Representative Houseman? Aye. Howard? Aye. Tice? Aye. Spearman? Aye. Fisher? Aye. Gunther? Gunther. Aye. Thank you. Hassan. Hassan. Her. Aye. Hornstein. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Jurgens. Jurgens votes aye. Munson. Aye. Pearson. Aye. Poppy. Poppy. And Salk? Yes. All right, I'm gonna go back one time. Um, Poppy, I saw you're unmuted. I did not catch anything from you. And then Happy representative. Hi. Okay, perfect. Thank you. And then Representative Hassan. All right. The total vote is 14 ayes and zero nays, Madam Chair. There being 14 ayes and zero nays, the motion prevails, and House File Nine is referred to the General Register. We now have House File uh, 82 uh, before us. Uh, Representative Hassan. Is she on? I do not believe so at this point. Oh dear.
Do we, uh, uh, Mr. Werther? Uh, uh, can we can we try a phone call? She's she's the she's the rest of our agenda. Yes, I'm uh, trying to track her down now. If everybody can just hang tight for a minute, we'll uh, try uh, to get over. Members, while we're uh, waiting for her, I will just note that uh, on this particular bill, um, uh, uh, Mr. Worth uh, sent you the uh, documents for the committee. Uh, we have letters from Minnesota Multi-Housing. Um, they um, uh, point out this was a very sudden bill, less than a day that they had to provide meaningful public comment. Um, and Minnesota Realtors uh, said the same thing. The timing issue made it very difficult for them to uh, respond and a letter from legal aid. So you have three documents, Minnesota multi-housing, Minnesota Realtors and legal aid, um, all of who are commenting on the, of the, on the bill. This was a package put together very quickly, almost over the weekend. Um, I believe the idea is that uh, Representative Winkler will uh, ultimately be the author, but it was to respond to uh, some of the issues in Minneapolis and St. Paul uh, around the, um, the civil, um, uh, some of the damage and, and the rebuilding uh, efforts. So it did come together very last minute. Well, this is really, this is strange. We don't have our author. Do we have anyone, uh, is anyone on the line prepared to substitute for her or uh, any testifiers for this bill? Madam Chair? Representative Howard? Uh, just a, a thought, perhaps uh, nonpartisan House Research could just walk through the bill for okay. us. And are they, are they on? Do we have nonpartisan Chair, research? Who Chair is involved members, in? Yeah, Chair and members, this is Mary Mullen from House Research. Welcome. Um, the bill you're uh, looking at today, let me make sure I have the right one up. This is House File 82. Yes, um, House File 82. number of bills I've been working on. You have to give me just a minute. Chair and members, this is a bill uh, that Representative Hassan is authoring that caps the rent for commercial and residential properties that are eligible to receive state funding. The state funding definition uses definitions from some of the other bills that are in this package in case they don't look familiar. Um, and it relates to state funding that will go to, to damaged buildings during the civil unrest that occurred in May and June of 2020. The bill then limits the rent for those properties to an average of the rent in the first quarter of 2020 or to the last annual rent payment made before March. It then um, allows the rent to be increased annually after that based on um, the uh, national urban inflation rate, which is a common inflation rate that's used in Minnesota statute. Uh, it allows residential tenants to use some of the um, remedies under chapter 504B, the landlord tenants statutes. And it affects newer renewed leases after July 1 of this year, and it expires on April 1st of 2024. 
Uh, Mr. Worth, any uh, any contact yet with the author? Um, I was just informed that she's having difficulty logging on. Um, one possible solution is that uh, Representative Her and Representative Hornstein's are co-authors on the bill, so they could sit in to make the motion for approval if, and, um, if necessary. We're still trying to get her on. And I don't know if we have either Representative Hornstein or Representative Her. Uh, I, 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 this is, this is uh, Representative Hausman. Can you hear me? This is Representative Hornstein. Yes. I, I would move uh, House File 82. Okay, Representative Hornstein moves uh, House File 82. And, and this I would think be- we're going to the general register, correct? Uh, this one goes to the Committee on Ways and Means. My understanding uh, is okay. that these are these are all pieces of a bill that, um, that will go to Ways and Means, and then in Ways and Means, they would be um, rolled into a larger bill, so this won't travel separately. Okay, so um, uh, Madam Chair, I move House File 82 uh, for re referral to the Committee on Ways and Means. On, on Ways and Means. Um, and uh, uh, questions, and, and I know nothing about this bill, so uh, if there are questions, um, it will have to be um, the um, nonpartisan research. Questions? Uh, Madam Representative, Munson. Representative Munson has a question. Representative Munson. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I guess to, to uh, our nonpartisan staff, um, I, I know there's been questions about how uh, state and, and federal dollars can go to uh, directly to private businesses. But if if a, if a business receives funding from the state to uh, to rebuild um, and this this bill appears to cap the rent uh, at whatever it was before the building was burned down or damaged, um, the, uh, the I guess the, the question I have does this also prevent uh, does it also cap rent after the time of sale if the property is sold in the next four years uh, does it does that carry over to the next owners or is an agreement with the existing owner um, on on how that can uh, uh, be capped and then secondly does it also impact the taxes does it cap the taxes if I'm if I'm a business and I'm getting, you know, twenty thousand dollars a month for rent, but I'm only paying, you know, two thousand dollars a month in taxes, and I rebuild, and the tax assessor comes in and charges me five thousand dollars a month in taxes now because the building is worth eight million dollars or whatever it's rebuilt at, um, I, you're saying I can't raise the rent to cover the new taxes if unless the taxes are also capped in this uh, legislation. Could you speak to that, Ms. Mullen? So I Chair, think our Chair and members, the first question is about whether or not uh, this follows uh, something that's sold. Because the bill does not indicate like, current owner, past owner, anything like that, it would, it would affect any properties. So it doesn't matter who the owner is or if the building is sold. And the second question is about taxes. There, I'm, I don't work on the tax committee. There are a number of portions of the larger package that's going to be heard in Ways and Means tomorrow that involve property taxes and tax relief. But I am unfortunately not familiar with those portions of the bill. But we could have someone from the from taxes contact you or also those bills are, I think, posted already for the Ways and Means Committee. Uh, Ms. Mullen, the idea of, of this bill was to be short term. Is is that uh, is it is it not drafted in such a way that it um, that it limits to a short term? Uh, Chair and members, the bill is limited to. I mean, the bill lasts until April one, twenty twenty four. Got it. Um, I did receive one other uh, letter from a gentleman in Minneapolis who is retired and, and used to work in this area, and I've passed that on to uh, both the author and Representative Winkler uh, with some, uh, j just the, in the way it's drafted, it was drafted rather quickly, I think, and uh, the technical nature, it, who's, was... Madam Chair, that's uh, me, Representative Hassan. I apologize. She's on. Um, Our author is on. Yes. Um, I have just like a morning of just tech issues. I apologize. And finally, um, I'm able to call in. 
So we have moved your bill and we've begun, uh, okay. uh, Ms. Mullen uh, did a, a description of the, of the content. And so, and uh, we have one question, other, other questions at this point, or um, Representative Hassan, if you'd like to make some comments. Uh, sure, Madam Chair members, I am really sorry that I was unable to uh, present my own bill. Uh, that's the world we live in. Um, I just want to share with you a statement that I prepare and the reason for this bill uh, so people can have an idea of the reason uh, we are trying to um, move this legislation. Uh, 2020 has been a heck of a year. Thus far, we witnessed a pandemic that closed our malls, restaurants, shops, gyms, and everything else, followed by the unjust murder of George Floyd in the hands of Minneapolis police, and then the civil unrest that burned down uh, many small businesses in our cultural corridors, uh, Lake Street, University Avenue, West Broadway, um, and other spaces. This impacted businesses were predominantly owned by black and brown folks who had a tough year because of COVID-19. I have the privilege and honor of representing District 62A on Lake Street, which sustained a lot of damages from fire, water, or other forms of destruction, happens to be in the heart of my district. This was a sad and traumatic for money in my community. Um, as they grapple and find a way to comprehend everything that took place in the last few weeks, um, I must highlight the root cause of the civil unrest, which was not only about one man being killed by the police. The civil unrest was about and is about economic uh, injustice, social injustice, and racial injustice that has been happening for over 400 years. Black, indigenous, and people of color in this country have been faced with systemic oppression that's as old as America itself. We, are, we were caught in the midst of two pandemics. COVID-19 and racial inequities that left many people in Black, Indigenous, and people of color communities behind. Nonetheless, many of you visited um, my district, and I want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for coming and seeing it for yourself and talking to people who have lost everything. We're talking about people who have been building and investing in businesses for over 27 years to people who just opened their doors right before COVID-19 started. During the last few weeks, we had listening sessions with our community um, members and heard from voices what rebuilding looks like. There has been a lot of concerns about gentrification and displacement. Everyone is worried about newer buildings being built, which means higher rent, which means they can't afford and they have to leave Lake Street, University Avenue, West Broadway. Um, and that's the reason why House Bill 82 was created. This is a short-term help. Um, we want to make sure that people stay where they are. And Lake Street and West Broadway, University Avenue, and other spaces come back to the way they were and even better. Um, the thing about Lake Street being cultural corridor is that um, people can't just, you know, move and go somewhere else. They can't open a shop in Edina because of the proximity to the people that they are trying to serve. People that are linked to most of the are predominantly uh, Hispanic and uh, African. And the people that buy their purchases and goods are Hispanic and these Africans in South Minneapolis. So the idea of, you know, gentrifying Lake Street terrifies not only our community, but also terrifies us as leaders who represent that district. Um, and this bill is supposed to keep people in Lake Street, in West Broadway, and in University Avenue. And what it will do is it caps the rent and, and make sure people are, um, you know, even with newer buildings, people are not going to pay uh, tons of, of, of thousands of dollars and are not displaced. And then we're not going to have Starbucks and Trader Joe's, not that I'm against Starbucks and Trader Joe's, but uh, we want to keep this space is the cultural corridor they are, and the strength of, of this spaces are our diversity. And I stand for questions. Okay, uh, thank you. Um, it, it is a sort of a work in progress. It's a relatively uh, quickly drafted um, over 
over the weekend, some of us were seeing it for the first time. There was one question, and, and I would maybe just ask Representative Munson to repeat that so that you're aware of, um, of the, the question we discussed earlier. Representative Munson. Thank you, Madam Chair and Representative Hassan. Um, my, my concerns are around uh, the restrictions that are being put on, on the, the businesses for uh, choosing tenants to, to, I mean, maybe new tenants, maybe existing tenants, but um, the first one is, if the if a building is rebuilt, let's say it was burned down or destroyed, and it's being rebuilt, um, my concern is around the new tax assessment that we place on a building. If it was previously a hundred thousand dollar value building and now is a you know four million dollar uh, value building, um, that the the new tax assessments that would hit next year would be such a significant increase that the business wouldn't the the property owner wouldn't be able to stay afloat uh, based on the old rent that was there. So you're really capping that. You're restricting maybe uh, was a warehouse and now they're going to be building a restaurant there, completely different property type, and uh, it shouldn't be restricted to what the old rent was uh, if you want to bring in new businesses and revitalize the area. Um, and then uh, um, another, just want to very quickly clarify in the, in, the, in the bill, it's not only restricting, putting restrictions on business or property owners that receive state funds, but it specifically says only if they if it says they receive or qualify to receive money. So if a business chooses not to receive money, are these restrictions also placed on, on the property owner? Representative Hassan. Thank um, you, Madam Chair, and thank you, Representative Monson. Hello? Yep, I hear you. Can you guys hear me? We, we can hear you. Yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Representative Munson. That's a very good question. Representative Munson, I'll tell you this. This bill is um, is uh, brand new and it's put together uh, recently. I'm more than happy uh, to work with you and others to make sure that, first of all, we don't want our, uh, you know, you know, building owners to leave Lake Street. We still want them to stay. Uh, and we don't want the tenants, the business, uh, you know, small business owners also to leave Lake Street. Uh, so we are more than happy to find a way to work with um, our building owners as well as our uh, tenants who are the small business owners to make sure that Lake Street is revitalized, but revitalized in a way that still shows the diversity of Lake Street because that's the strength of Lake Street. Uh, I'm open to suggestions and comments. We can talk offline. And I think this uh, parts of this bill are going to seven different committees this uh, this week. One of which is the the tax committee. Uh, we were supposed to deal today with the with the lease leases portion of it, um, but um, it, it sounds, Representative Hassan, as though you are um, you're taking some of these questions and and pursuing them with the uh, with other with the other Absolutely authors. Absolutely, Representative Sock has a question. Uh, it might turn into more of a comment rather than a question, although it could be thought of as a question. Um, one of the things that I'm concerned about is that, um, and this has happened before in the world of real estate and property values, and that is when somebody tries to change the market forces and to try to have those market forces perform in a way that they have not ever in history. So. I'm concerned on this as if we could think of these buildings as a thing that functions. And it functions in two ways for society. One is it provides space and it provides cash flow. Those are the two functions of this building. And so that building then needs to be able to make those things. Like it's producing something, like a factory. It's producing space and it's producing cash flow. In the production of cash flow, it has to have income and then expense. And those things have to function. Otherwise, the building itself, and I, and I can tell you this from my, my background, is that the developer, I, I guess one of the, it's a joke in the industry is how, how silly do you have to be to be an investor who will invest in something that is proven that it's not going to make money. And that is my concern here, is we are proposing that we are going to have these buildings. I'm actually afraid <clears throat> that there won't be any buildings. We will have a structure that we will be fairly um, happy with, and we think we've covered all the appropriate things, but there won't be any buildings. 
because in order to have a building and somebody to build it, you must have a structure by which the ownership of that building makes some sense to somebody. And, and that's my concern is that I'm not certain that I see that happening here. And so I want us to make sure that we don't build a fantasy because we want it and because the public wants it. And I would say even so much as the, the investors and the owners want that to be true. But I don't know how this, which is the rent issue, I'm trying to stay focused on that, that that's what we're talking about, is right. this issue of, of rent that cannot change over a period of the beginning of that building's life. So if that building, building it, owning it, making it function creates zero expense, then that could be, then be a fantasy that can go forward. I just can't imagine that being true. We know there will be some expenses. I think on a probably an investment where a building is at least brought from the remnants into function, there's a lot of money that has been put in place and I'm not so certain who the bank is that's delivering this money. I don't see it in the bill, which would be another way of a sort of, of working this cash flow problem, is that the bill might provide the money for the beginning of the building to function so that the market can then be built. And once you build a market, you pull back those incentives so that the market can take over. And so, that, I'm just that's that's my ability. It's the best I can do to share how I see concerns in this particular function. It has almost nothing to do with the fact that we want these buildings to exist and that we want um, a good place for somebody to do business. It's just that can we create them? My fear is we'll create the the dream or the assurance that these are intended to be there and there won't be anything. So I'll, I'll leave that then to the discussion of, of people wiser than me. And, and I think you've outlined um, some of the complexity. Um, we, we have, as I said, this is, there are parts of this bill going to seven different committees. Uh, we were looking at uh, particularly uh, leases for housing, uh, but um, there are tax implications that are being dealt with in the tax committee. Uh, it's a work in progress. Um, we, um, I think we're wanting to respond to the, the community at this time of, of civil unrest, and that's the context in which we're, we're bringing it. Do we have other, other questions, or questions or comments? Uh, yes, Madam Chair, um, we have Representative Hornstein with the next Representative question. Representative Hornstein. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I just want to thank uh, Representative Hassan for this bill. And uh, to some of the points that Representative Salk and others have raised, you have to look at this bill in a, a broader context of, of several other initiatives that will be uh, introduced and are, have been introduced and are moving through the process, you know, all with the goal of revitalizing the corridors that Representative Hassan has talked about. And uh, there is uh, very strong concerns. I've heard them as well that the redevelopment will, will displace these, these immigrants and uh, black, indigenous, and people of color owned businesses that have existed there and have uh, been very vital to this community and our community for many, many years. And so that is really the, the, the most important part of this whole package, that the revitalization takes place uh, in a way that there is, that there is equity and people can uh, return to, to these thriving businesses. And it's not a theoretical thing. There are already reports of, of land speculation potentially and, uh, and, and outside investors and, and others uh, that, that are, are coming in, I think, to, 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 to make a quick buck here. And that is exactly what we don't want. And so this bill, in conjunction with other bills that have been introduced, uh, really are, are geared towards uh, preserving and protecting those small businesses that um, have thrived for many years uh, in these areas. So um, I think that's a really important uh, consideration as, as we move forward. And I, again, thank you so much, Representative Hassan, for this bill. Other questions? Uh, next on the list is Representative Johnson. 
Representative Johnson. Uh, Chair Allison, members, Representative Zott, I understand what you're trying to do with this bill. And are you trying to do what's gonna, what you feel is proper for uh, your your neighborhoods, your constituents that were they're suffering from the effects of riots from a lot of people that don't live in your community, and they did a lot of damage in your community. In, in fact, uh, one person was arrested in uh, Colorado today for the fire bombing and the arson of the uh, police department. He was from Brainerd, Minnesota. But uh, I have concerns on this. I want your neighborhood and your businesses to thrive and rebuild and just go continue, go gangbusters. But I have a feeling this is gonna have the uh, reverse effect of that. This is gonna stall things. We already heard a bill yesterday in judiciary for the city trying to be able to do more imminent domain to take the property from the owner. We, we also have concerns with that. But with these, most of these, a lot of these businesses and these buildings are, whether they're housing or business, commercial, warehousing, they have a lot of them are insured, but they have, in order to collect that insurance, they have to rebuild. If they don't rebuild, they don't collect on the insurance. That's written in a lot of, uh, prop, a lot of commercial property insurance policies so that people at failing business just don't burn it down to collect the insurance money. It's intentionally there. But now with the, uh, these, these were, a lot of them were older buildings that didn't have, that were built under different regulations. Now with the uh, new reg, building new, there's new regulations, much higher cost. And by capping the rent at the uh, old level before this new building, which it's going to cost a lot more. The value is going to be a lot greater. Their taxes are going to be a lot greater. You're putting the owners of the property into a position where they cannot afford to build. It's something called return on investment. If the return on investment is at a certain mark, banks won't even loan money to, to rebuild. So we got to be careful how we do things to make sure that your neighborhoods and those communities can rebuild. Something like this might actually do the adverse effect and cause it not to be rebuilt. Thank you, members. Other, uh, either a response to that or other um, observations and questions from committee members. Madam Chair, if I can respond to that. Representative Hassan. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, uh, Representative Johnson. Um, I wanna highlight one thing here. We want to rebuild our communities. We want to rebuild these cultural corridors. We want to work with our real estate owners. We want to work with our small business owners. We want to find a way to rebuild, revitalize, and make sure that these cultural corridors are the cultural corridors that they are and even better than what they were. So I, I hope people are not mistaken that we are trying to scare away real estate uh, you know, owners, but we're trying to both roadblocks so they can't build. That's not the, the intent here. The intent here is that A, we rebuild better than what, uh, you know, these cultural corridors were, and B, that we make sure that the previous tenants stay, well, if they choose, they stay, and they're not being displaced because we have a fancier building. And C, it's a, a a way to find to work all of us together. And like I said in the beginning, I'm open to ideas, options. I, I can talk offline, but I want to make sure that I look my community in the eye and said that they will not be displaced and that Lake Street will not be gentrified. And I want to deliver that. So I will find a way to work with real estate owners, to work with the city, to work with the state and other stakeholders to be sure that's what we're doing here. Thank you. Other questions or comments? We have a question from Representative Tice. Representative Tice. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just want to reiterate a little bit about what we're hearing. I think, um, Representative Hassan, if you can find a way to uh, contact some of these folks that own these buildings and just say, what can we do to make it worth your while and to keep it as low cost as possible? Obviously, just the rebuilding part of it is going to be more expensive, 
and how do we work with rent controls on that part of it? I think that we have to be very innovative and uh, out of the box, but I do agree with Representative Sock. It's going to be really hard to do this, and I'm afraid that we're going to uh, probably stagnate some of the rebuilding until after April 1st, 2024. Um, if it's not worth it to do it, uh, people just won't do it and they won't rebuild the, the buildings. Um, I think we have to be very cognizant of it's a very unique situation and how do we do it? But I would say getting a lot of these owners together and getting their input in it and tell them, letting them know what your mission is uh, and involving them will probably be extremely helpful to, to everyone, the community, to uh, the city, everybody. So that would be my suggestion. I do think there's there's going to be uh, there's going to be a lot of challenges uh, going forward with something like this. Uh, you need to have the buy-in from the owners, and and you need to figure out what that means. So with that, that's my two cents worth. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Representative Tice. Uh, Representative Jurgens has the cutest baby on his lap. Uh, if this is the wonderful thing <laughs> about these Zoom meetings, we get a little sense of, uh, of uh, family, uh, the extended family. <clears throat> anyway, yes, we're enjoying yes. that. Cute Thank little you, baby. Sure. Yes, I've, I have twin grandbabies, and this is, this is Walker with me. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> Representative, <clears throat> excuse me, Representative Hassan. <clears throat> Any responses to um, Representative uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, Representative Tice, and thank you for making the trip to come down <laughs> and see Lake Street. Uh, my community and, and I appreciate, greatly appreciate um, your presence uh, on, on that day on the tour. Yes, uh, uh, we are willing to work with uh, all the stakeholders. I don't think we can force people on some legislation that we uh, crafted in St. Paul and just say, you know what, take it or leave it. I don't think that's how we are planning to work. Um, we're trying to work with the building owners. We're trying to work with the community. We're trying to find a balance on what we're trying to create. We want to make sure that people rebuild because there's a uh, profit for rebuilding. I don't think anybody's going to rebuild if there's no profit. And then we also want to make sure when we rebuild that we're also intentional about the tenants on those buildings. Um, and if that takes, you know, a lot of creativity and innovations and in, uh, working with all stakeholders and all hands on deck, we're planning that. Uh, this is, a, you know, the beginning stage and we will work with everyone and hopefully we can put together something that um, is as productive as we are, we are hoping. Thank you. Madam Chair. Uh, is that Taylor. Taylor, please? Yes. I just want to say that know that I'm watching this very carefully because the last three nights here in St. Cloud, we have had some uh, yes. some things going on. And so mm -hmm. if this is going to be something that happens, there's going to be a lot of communities watching this going forward. So I want to make sure that, you know, we are very intentional about what we're doing. We don't know who's going to be next. We have to get this right, don't we? <clears throat> um, I, uh, Mr. <coughs> Excuse me, Mr. Worth, do we have any other uh, um, next question is uh, Representative Fisher and then Representative Bierman after that. Representative Fisher. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, Committee, uh, Representative Hassan. Thank you for bringing this uh, bill forward. I think it's real important uh, to move this conversation along. Uh, uh, I've had the opportunity to see and, and talk to some of the business owners in Minneapolis. This past weekend, I had a chance to uh, listen to a lot of the business, uh, small businesses who want to reopen on the university area in St. Paul. And a lot of the concerns that they were having is they were in buildings that were largely repairable, uh, that did not have to be raised and rebuilt. And they were concerned about the fact that uh, they weren't sure if their uh, business owner was even, that the landlord was even going to uh, rebuild it in such a, in terms of repair the building and allow them to continue with the rates they had going forward. These are people who, wanted to continue to operate. Uh, currently, the uh, areas where their business is ours were 
fenced off because the uh, landlords were not making decisions yet to what was happening, not letting these folks back into the buildings and into the businesses where the business buildings were still safe in some of these areas. And I think this kind of gets to the larger question of the gentrification that might be trying to occur is some building holders are looking at this as an opportunity to force out, I think, to force out some of the people that are currently there and when they repair it, repair it in such a way that uh, uh, the building is still there, but they're deciding this is the opportunity to get out the old people and then I can get some new businesses in. And what it does is it displaces um, uh, immigrant communities, basically, uh, small business owners who are of color and forces them out into not being able to continue on in the businesses. And I, and I think this is what the heart of the bill is, is trying to make sure it occurs. And I, I, I applaud uh, your efforts on it. I also appreciate the input from Representative Munson, and I know that you're going to take a look at is how to address the property taxes. If there's a way to put a uh, kind of a cap uh, of how much that can increase each year, uh, maybe working out of like a TIF model or something like that, saying if they do that, they will keep it capped uh, for a certain amount of time. So I want to uh, thank you for bringing the bill forward uh, to let you know that there are a number of businesses, small business people who want to restart in St. Paul on University who, if their buildings are repaired, could get right back in there, who, are, who can really use that benefit to make sure this would allow them to continue to operate for years to come. So thank you for that. Representative Bierman. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I want to thank everybody who's commented. I think um, this bill is at its beginning stage, and I think we've had, heard from a, a lot of folks who understand what we're up against with this uh, community rebuilding on such short notice. It's, it's like everything else we've been dealing with in uh, this year between distance learning and COVID, you know, sometimes we have to adapt and we have to take input from many sides. And uh, so I think a lot of the comments are spot on. We're dealing with a market that uh, certainly needs to be acknowledged. It's, it's the way we thrive in a lot of ways. And I really appreciated Representative Sock's comments about that overall mm -hmm. picture. But I also believe that sometimes when we are working for a goal we, and we know what we want, we want to give people who call this home the opportunity to rebuild and to have that chance. And obviously this bill isn't perfect out of the box where it's going to solve those problems. So it's, it's going to be a work in progress and there's a lot of work to do. But um, I appreciate Representative Hassan for bringing the bill forward and providing the, the, the chance for people who want to stay and want to rebuild where they've worked and lived and uh, love Minneapolis and they want to stay right where they are. And these obstacles, you know, it's just really about creating what we want. And I think that we can work within that when we, when we reach out and listen to folks and figure out new ways to do things so that we can achieve the desired goal. So I appreciate Representative Hassan for bringing the bill forward. It's, it's nowhere near completion, but I'm going to uh, vote in favor of it to give it a chance so that we can move it forward into all these committees and make sure we get the best bill possible and the best outcome for the folks in the neighborhoods who were suddenly faced with life-changing events out of their control. So thank you to the author for bringing it forward. Representative Salk, I think I saw your hand again. <clears throat> Representative Salk. Thank you, I had to get my buttons pressed. Um, I also wanna underline because in my first kind of description, I was using the, the bill to focus on the idea of managed income as opposed to managed expenses, which are not part of this bill particularly right here. But in almost every large um, development project where you have sources of money that may come from more than one place, and we've got a sort of a really good, my monstrous example here in Rochester, where we have multiple entities who are providing asset guarantee, and we have multiple entities that are dealing with the expense flow. So for instance, uh, some of you have mentioned these, and I just want to bring them to the focus so that the discussion is actually using 
all of these different tools rather than just one tool. And I understand that I'm just going to ignore the fact that the that we're supposed to discipline ourselves to um, the rent issue. But if we go to the issue of TIF, which uh, I think Representative Fisher brought it up, what that's a big deal for an investment to be able to survive in the market is how does the TIF roll out? How does it become an asset to that property? And therefore, it becomes an asset to the ability of the tenant to be able to pay. So you've got a number of areas there. You also have city utilities that can be managed or waived in all kinds of different ways. So there are a number of tools that can be looked at as ways of managing the, the concern for a crisis a set of expenses that might weigh on the uh, business that's, uh, that's there or the investor that's there. So I, I guess I just want to make sure we are at it, that those things are also included. Now, I know that your counsel to me is that, you know, we've got multiple committees that are going to look at it. Well, I'm not hearing those committees. I don't know. I don't yeah, know. Right. So I want to I want to get this noise into the stream of the discussion so that I can at least be confident and rest in peace that these items have been brought up. Yeah. It is, it is unusual to have a, uh, a, we know that there's a larger bill out there and this is a, a piece of it. So, uh, Mr. Worth, do we have other um, others on the list? I have no other questions. Okay. Representative Hassan, final comments. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you everyone for the wonderful discussion. Um, this is the, this bill is at the beginning stage. Um, there's no perfect bill. And um, what happened in, in um, you know, the Twin Cities and surrounding suburbs is something extraordinary, like the likes of something we have never seen. Um, and some of you saw the devastation on this cultural corridors um, and, and have talked to people who have lost everything. And um, what we are doing here is to, you know, knock at every door and find solutions. And um, the last thing we want to do is, uh, you know, have, you know, empty spaces on this uh, cultural corridors where real estate, uh, you know, developers and owners decide not to rebuild. That's not the intent here. The intent here is how do we rebuild, um, but make sure that, you know, our community is not gentrified and displaced. It's imperative we take action Im um, immediately to support and rebuild our wounded communities. We must be intentional about rebuilding. And this act will support our communities in an equ equitable and holistic way so we can rebuild for and by the community. This commercial hub is uh, the, life uh, the lifeblood of our minority immigrant communities. By rebuilding with intentional focus on equity and community, we can afford the devastating effects of gentrification. And I'm open to work with anybody in this committee or uh, anyone else who's interested uh, to put together something that works for all stakeholders. We'll work with our, um, you know, building owners. We'll work with our tenants and business owners and um, make sure that we build uh, cultural hubs that are better than what it was before, but not gentrified and displaced uh, the business owners that were there before. Thank you. Thank you all for your comments. <clears throat> we sort of acknowledge this is a, a work in progress, sort of an unusual uh, approach, but at this point, uh, Representative Hornstein renews his motion that House File 82 be referred to the Committee on Ways and Means. The clerk will take the roll. All right. Representative Houseman? Aye. Representative Howard? Aye. Representative Tice? Sorry, it took me a moment to get unmuted. Oh, no worries. Uh, Representative no. Tice? No. Representative Bierman? Aye. Representative Fisher? Aye. Representative Gunther? Aye. Representative Hassan? Aye. Representative Herr? Aye. Representative Hornstein? Aye. Representative Johnson? No. Representative Jurgens? No. 
Representative Munson? Uh, no. Representative Pearson? No. Representative Poppy? Poppy votes aye. And Representative Salk? Yes. Uh, the vote for that would be 10 ayes and five nays. There being 10 ayes and five nays, the motion prevails and the bill is as, a, uh, no, we didn't, we did not add any, any amendment, is referred to ways and means. There being no other business before the committee, we are adjourned. Thank you, members. Thank you.